Hi, friends, and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. I am your host, Heather. I have been podcasting on Tudor England for 15 years now. This channel is where I put all of my old episodes from all of my shows, TudorCon videos, and lots of other fun content like this video right here. Today, we are doing another Tudor Portraits and Propaganda video and we're going to explore one of the most captivating portraits from the Elizabethan era, painted in 1592, the Ditchley portrait of Queen Elizabeth I. This masterpiece was created by Marcus Gerhardt's The Younger. It isn't just a stunning visual representation, it's a tale woven in oil on canvas, filled with symbols and hidden messages, like all of the Tudor portraits. Gerhardt's was renowned for his cutting-edge approach, captured the essence of the period and the spirit of the queen in this portrait. His innovative techniques and attention to detail made him the go-to artist of the 1590s, and the Ditchley portrait stands as a testament to his artistic prowess. The man behind the commission of this portrait was Sir Henry Lee, a figure deeply intertwined in the fabric of Elizabethan court life. He served as the Queen's champion from 1559 until his retirement in 1590. He was more than a courtier. He was a symbol of chivalry and loyalty to the crown. His retirement brought significant change. He retreated to Ditchley and lived with his mistress, Anne Vavasor. This marked a downturn in his relationship with the Queen, a bond once defined by mutual respect and admiration. In September 1592, Lee sought to mend the strained relationship with an elaborate entertainment event for the Queen, likely held at the Ditchley estate. This grand gesture was more than just festivity, it was a symbolic olive branch, an act seeking forgiveness and reconciliation. The Ditchley portrait was likely commissioned to commemorate the event, serving as a lasting reminder of Lee's loyalty and the Queen's graciousness in forgiving her once-favored courtier. In this portrait, Elizabeth I stands majestically, her feet upon Oxfordshire, Lee's home county, a visual homage to his estate and their renewed connection. The symbolism is profound, indicating not just geographical location, but also the Queen's forgiveness, standing above the storms of political and personal upheaval, shining like the sun after a tempest. In this portrait, Gerhardt's captured more than the queen. He captured a moment of political and personal significance, creating a work that transcends time, telling a story of power, forgiveness, and artistry that continues to captivate us centuries later. So let's look at the symbolism. First, we have Elizabeth on the globe. The most striking feature is Elizabeth standing confidently on a globe. Her feet rest specifically over Oxfordshire, a deliberate choice by the artist. This is not just geographical reference. It's a political statement. Of course, it was Sir Henry Lee's estate. And it symbolizes the Queen's dominion over her realm and her magnanimity in forgiving Lee. Her stance is dominating yet graceful reflecting her role as both sovereign and a merciful leader, a balance that defined her reign. There's also the stormy sky and the sunshine. So the stormy sky parts to reveal sunshine, a masterful use of weather as metaphor. This imagery transcends backdrop. It's a narrative device. The turbulent clouds represent the tumultuous times and personal challenges that both the Queen and Lee faced. The clearing skies and emerging sunlight symbolize renewal, forgiveness, and the restoration of favor. Gerhardt's uses this natural phenomenon to suggest that just as the sun dispels the storms, the queen's grace overcomes conflict and discord. There's also a lot of text there. There's Latin inscriptions and a fragmented sonnet adding layers of meaning. The inscriptions translated as she gives and does not expect. She can, but does not take revenge. And in giving back, she increases. They speak volumes about Elizabeth's philosophy of rule. They emphasize her grace, her capacity for forgiveness, and the power inherent in her clemency. The sonnet is believed to be composed by Lee. It draws parallels between Elizabeth and the sun, a common symbol for monarchs, 
and it portrays her as a source of light and life, benevolent yet powerful. This juxtaposition of power and benevolence is a recurrent theme in Elizabethan propaganda, reinforcing her image as a ruler who was as much of a nurturer as she was a ruler. In this portrait, her attire is a visual feast replete with symbolic undertones. The extensive use of pearls and white silk is impossible to miss. Pearls were often associated with the Virgin Mary in the 16th century. We've talked about that in other portraits, too, where she has lots of pearls reflecting her carefully cultivated image as the Virgin Queen. This portrayal was more than a personal preference. It was a political strategy, positioning her as a paragon of chastity and divine right. The white silk of her gown, luxurious and pristine, further emphasizes this message of purity and unblemished rule. Each element in her clothing, from the grandiose farthingale to the intricate lace, was carefully chosen as a symbol of her status, authority, and the untouchable nature of her reign. Marcus Gerhardt the Younger was a visionary in his approach to portrait painting, particularly in his depiction of clothing. His technique in the Ditchley portrait reveals an acute attention to detail and a deep understanding of fabric and form. His ability to render the textures and sheen of the queen's attire speaks to his mastery over his medium. His focus on the clothing, often spending more time on it than on the queen's face, offers a fascinating insight into Elizabethan fashion and the importance placed on royal attire as a symbol of status and power. Beyond its aesthetic brilliance, the Ditchley portrait was a tool of propaganda. Through this portrait, Elizabeth I broadcast messages about her reign, her divinity, her unassailable position as a female ruler in a male-dominated world. The grandeur and opulence of her attire, the pearls symbolizing purity, and the overall majesty of her depiction were designed to awe and remind viewers of her absolute authority. Marcus Gerhardt's The Younger was born in Bruges around 1562, moved to England with his family as a child, escaping religious persecution. His father was also a notable artist and introduced young Marcus to the vibrant world of Elizabethan painting. In England, he quickly established himself as a premier portraitist known for his innovation and skill. His work was characterized by a unique blend of realism and symbolism, capturing not just the physical likeness of his subjects, but also their status, character, and the political undercurrents of the time. The Ditchley portrait is a prime example of this, where Gearhart's talent for realism is evident in the intricate depiction of fabric and jewels, and his skill in symbolism is displayed in the numerous allegorical elements. The Ditchley portrait's fame led to the creation of several variants, each offering a slightly different perspective on Elizabeth I. One notable example is the Manteo portrait. While similar in composition and symbolism, the Manteo portrait presents a somewhat softened image of the queen, perhaps indicating a different aspect of her persona or a shift in the public's perception over time. They are interpretations, each reflecting the evolving artistic trends of the era and the differing perspectives on the Queen's image. They demonstrate the enduring impact of the Ditchley portrait, not just as a singular work of art, but as a template for exploring royal imagery and propaganda. The difference in facial features, attire, even the portrayal of symbolic elements like the globe and the skies offer insights into how Elizabeth's image was continually reshaped and idealized to suit the political and cultural narratives of the time. So there we have it, my friends, the Ditchley portrait of Elizabeth I. If you made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it, I sure would appreciate a press of that like button. It helps feed the algorithm and helps us reach more viewers and spread the Tudor love. Also, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I put out videos like this on the regular. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Remember to drink your water and remember you are deeply loved and I am so glad I share this planet with you. I will be back again very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>